What's up guys, welcome to another Scratch tutorial. This is part 2 on how to make a Bouncy Bounce game in Scratch. And in this video, I'll be showing, we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at how to make the platform moving and the switching sides of the player. And this project is shared on my Scratch profile, so you can check it out, links in description. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. So here is last time, and last time we were looking at how to make the movement of the player. And if you haven't seen part 1 yet, you can check it out, links in description. But anyways, we want the platform to move left and right. So we're going to make a variable. We're going to call this variable speed and select for the sprite only. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to set our speed variable to 0 0.4, and I'll explain why we need this variable later. So we're going to get a go to motion and drag in the glide block. I'm going to glide speed seconds to X. Um, X, we just drag this over here. X, 125, and Y is going to stay the same. So I'm going to, I'm going to go explain what this variable is for. So you see we set this variable to 0 0.4 and we're putting this variable into this space so we're going to basically what this means it's gliding 0 0.4 seconds to x 125 y negative 154 and you might be wondering why can you just type in the number yourself because we will use this multiple times so it'll be easier if you just use a variable so you can just change one value value instead of just changing all the others but um you'll see what i mean later and yeah so we're going to get a forev loop and we're going to say we're going to glide to glide speed seconds again and we're going to make this negative and this is going to stay the same and then we're going to wait speed seconds and then we're going to duplicate this but instead we're just going to change this to 125 so now if we run the project you can see that the platform can move left and right so that is exactly what we want so let me just save this project and let's get working on the switching sides of the player. So what I mean by switching sides, if you don't know what I mean, I mean is that if the player passes some limit on one side, it teleports to the other side. And this happens for both sides, not just one side. And yeah. So we're going, in order to do this, to, to do this we're going to go to my blocks and create a custom block. I'm going to call this block. Switch sides and then we're going to add a number input. And you can call this number input anything you want. I'm just going to call it number input. So we're going to drag our newly made block over here and we're going to put um, a value here in the space. So we're going to put 240, and then over here where it says in our define switch size number input block, we're going to get an if statement. So if our, we're going to drag an and, and then we're going to put over here. So if we are pressing the, um, the key right arrow is pressed, the key right arrow, and we are also, our x position is greater than number input. Then we're going to set our, we're going to go to x, which is um, over here. That is negative 241. And y is going to be y position. So what this block does, it, it checks if we're pressing the right arrow and we have passed this certain limit. And if we have, we teleport to the left side of the screen. And you'll see what it does. 
So if we go to the right of the screen, it goes to the left. But we can't do it for the left of the screen. So we need to add that. So we're going to duplicate this and change it up a bit. So we're going to change right arrow to left arrow and this to a less than. So we're going to do X position is less than number input. And number input is going to be times negative one. And go ahead and pause this video if you need to because this is a lot of steps. So over here, we're going to change this to a positive number. So basically this just does the same thing as this, but instead it does it for the other side. So if we touch the left side, we teleport to the right side. So if we save the project and run it now, we can, we can now switch sides, which is exactly what we want. And so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next Scratch tutorial. Peace out.